Hello and welcome to today's lesson on the uses of electromagnets, which is part of the magnetism and electromagnetism topic in GCSE separate science physics. So if we are successful and we learn in today's lesson, we should be able to understand how different electromagnets work in the real world. So we should be able to detail the basic properties of electromagnetism, state the different uses of electromagnets in the real world, and link the basic electromagnetic properties to applications in the the real world, which is part of the GCSE separate science physics specification in 4.7.2.1 electromagnetism. In particular, students should be able to interpret diagrams of electromagnetic devices in order to explain how they work. So let's see if we can understand these basic learning objectives as we move through this particular lesson. So in the previous lesson, we've looked at what an electromagnet is and the factors which change the strength of an electromagnet. Now, now this lesson we're going to look at the different uses of electromagnets in the real world. So to explain the physics behind the different pieces of equipment we need to use the four principles of electromagnetism. Principle 1. When electrical current flows in a wire a magnetic field is formed around a wire. Principle 2. The stronger the current the stronger the magnetic field strength of the electromagnet. Principle 3. When a current stops flowing there's no magnetic field around the wire and Principle 4. If the current changes direction, the magnetic field of the electromagnet changes polarization. So north and south pole swap ends. So with these four basic principles, we can use these principles to explain how electromagnets can be used in the real world. Because electromagnets have many uses in the real world, such as in scrapyard cranes, in circuit breakers, in relay switches, in loudspeakers and in headphones, in electrical bells, in particle accelerators, in MRI scanners, microphones, magnetic levitation trains. So there are many, many different uses of electromagnets in the real world. Now we can explain the uses of the many different applications of electromagnets by considering those four basic principles of electromagnetism. So how does a scrapyard crane work? Well, scrap vehicles are moved in a scrapyard by a coil attached to a crane. When an electrical current passes through the coil, the coil becomes an electromagnet and the steel of the vehicle sticks to the electromagnet. This occurs because steel is a magnetic material. The crane can then move the vehicle. So when the electro electrical current from the coil is removed, this makes the coil lose its magnetism and so the steel vehicle drops off. Now it's important to note that when the electrical current is switched off, the iron coil needs to lose its magnetic field quickly, which is why we use iron because it is a soft magnet. It's easily magnetized, it's easily unmagnetized. Now, if we made our coil out of steel, when the electrical current will be switched off, it would retain its magnetic field for a longer time, it will be a hard magnet, so it makes it unsuitable to use in an electromagnetic crane. We can also consider how a loudspeaker works. Now, a loudspeaker works by the following process. A current passes through the coil, which makes the coil an electromagnet. The electrical current from the amp Amplifier is continually changing directions backwards and forwards, which causes the magnetic field around the coil to change direction backwards and forwards. So the change in attraction and repulsion between the permanent magnet's magnetic field and the coil's magnetic field produces a force on the coil, making the coil vibrate backwards and forwards because the force is moving backwards and forwards. So this in turn makes the speaker cone around the coil vibrate backwards and forwards, which generates sound waves. Now the frequency in which the current changes direction in the coil is the frequency of the sound that the speaker produces. Now this sound wave is produced because the movement of air particles produce pressure variations in the air needed for a sound wave. So the air molecules bunch together to form compressions and spread out to form refractions. So, the moving coil in, in loudspeakers and headphones uses the motor effect to convert the current in the coil of wire to changes of pressure in sound waves. So, for a loudspeaker, like we mentioned before, a coil is placed inside a permanent magnet and attached to a diaphragm. And the frequency of the sound wave produced is the same as the frequency of the alternating current supplied to the coil. Now, a microphone works by a very similar process, but in the opposite direction. Pressure variations in sound waves 
cause the flexible diaphragm of the microphone to vibrate. So the vibrations of the diaphragm cause vibrations in the coil. So the coil will then move relative to the permanent magnet. So this will induce a potential difference in the coil because there is a change in how many magnetic field lines are being cut through the coil because of the movement of the coil and the permanent magnet. So because the coil is then part of a complete circuit, this induced potential difference causes a current to flow around the circuit. Now changing the size and the direction of the induced current matches the vibrations of the coil. So the electrical signals generated match the pressure variations in the sound waves. So the microphone uses the generator effect to convert variations in pressure in a, in a sound wave into an alternating current. So for a microphone the coil is attached to a diaphragm and placed inside a permanent magnet. So the alternating potential difference induced in the coil of the microphone has the same frequency as the sound waves which make the diaphragm of the microphone vibrate. Another example of using an electromagnet in the real world is an electrical bell. So an electric bell is used to make a sound. A switch is pressed to then turn the electromagnet on because we've now got a complete circuit so a current is flowing through the electromagnet. This will cause the iron armature to be attracted towards the electromagnet because iron is a magnetic material. So this makes the hammer strike the gong and then at that point when the hammer has struck, struck the gong the circuit is broken so the electromagnet stops working and the armature springs back. Now this will then complete the circuit again and the cycle will start again and this continues for as long as the switch is pressed which makes that repeated bell sound that the bell is famous for. Another particular use of an electromagnet is a circuit breaker. Well a circuit breaker is used to turn off an electrical circuit when the current passing through it is too high. So the circuit breaker is a switch in series with an electromagnet and the switch is held closed by a spring. Now when the current is too large the switch is pulled open by the electromagnet and the switch will then stay open until it's manually reset by the user. The final use of an electromagnet we're going to look at in today's lesson is the electronic relay which is used to connect or relay different circuits. So a relay is used to switch an electrical machine on and off, the most famous example being in a car engine. So when the current passes through the electromagnet it becomes magnetic and it attracts the armature onto it. Now the armature then turns the pivot and closes the switch gap. So at this point a small current can then be used to turn a much larger current with an electromagnet. So what do we know from today's lesson? That when a current flows through a conducting wire a magnetic field is produced around the wire. The strength of the magnetic field depends on the current going through the wire and the distance from the wire. Now you should be able to then interpret diagrams of electromagnetic devices in order to explain how they work. So if we've been successful in today's lesson we should be able to detail the basic properties of electromagnetism, state the different uses of electromagnetism in the real world and finally link the basic properties of electromagnetism to applications in the real world. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the uses of electromagnets which is part of the magnetism and electromagnetism topic in GCSE separate science physics. Thank you very much for listening to today's lesson and as always have a lovely day.